good afternoon and uh, they uh, they tell me that they're ready to get going so uh, first off I'm Randy Thompson I am the uh, County Commissioner for District 1 and uh, I'm uh, very pleased to be here uh, to uh, start opening the discussion for uh, for this particular project you know Brunswick County uh, is uh, is the fastest growing place. I've been here 20 years, a little over 20 years now, and I know myself the changes that I have seen Brunswick County go through. If we did not have an effort for planning for the future, Brunswick County wouldn't be the county that it is today. We need to prepare for the future, and we need to have good blueprints and make sure that we've got the framework established for our growth for the future and our needs for the future. And we're very excited that we're, we've got, uh, in this particular project, we've got our planning and our parks and recreation uh, combined in this project to, uh, to look at the needs for the county and project our future. And I know we've got an excellent team uh, that's going to be working on this project. We're excited about the team. Uh, we have, uh, this is not their first project with Brunswick County. Uh, we've, uh, we've gotten some great uh, products uh, out of them in the past, and so we're really looking forward to, uh, to what we see from this. And uh, without saying anything else, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Michael Norton, uh, one of the project leads with the company, and uh, and he'll do some introductions and introductions for our staff that's, uh, that's in the room as well. So thank you again for coming out this afternoon. Michael. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson, and, and appreciate, uh, appreciate everyone's involvement in this, in this process. And as Commissioner Thompson mentioned, this is an intentional combination of a comprehensive land use plan and parks and recreation master plan update. Uh, bringing the visions of these two plans together over the next several months and and public input is is not only desired but it's it's very necessary as as we progress forward forward in this and you'll have multiple opportunities to do so obviously in the in the current environment there are restrictions on our public gatherings and and things of that nature but uh, please visit the project website you'll hear more about that throughout the presentation on ways you can connect and opportunities you will have to ask questions and, and write in questions and make phone calls, uh, as well as take the, take the survey online. Uh, so as we, as we begin this, uh, this process, I want to uh, in introduce, as, as we get into the agenda, first of all, uh, Mr. Aaron Perkins, Parks and Recreation Director, uh, Ms. Kirstie Dixon, uh, Planning, uh, director and obviously staff from planning and parks and rec supporting this effort so uh, they are your your uh, county project leads uh, myself uh, Jim Ford with with McGill uh, Meg Nealon with Nealon planning we're here to support the county in this process and to help facilitate these activities we're excited to be here and we'll begin that part of the presentation now to acquaint you with some of the discovery and also acquaint you with the areas of, of interest to help uh, generate the types of questions that you, that you may have as we proceed forward. Good afternoon, and we have prepared a brief presentation to touch on some of the highlights of the existing conditions of Brunswick County. And keeping in mind this is not comprehensive, we just wanted to touch on a few things and more importantly hear from you after this presentation. So we'll talk a little bit about the process and what to expect as it unfolds. Um, a little bit about Brunswick today, both the people, our population here, as well as all of the characteristics of the place. And we'll have some time for discussion at the end to talk about some things that will shape the vision and goals for Brunswick County for the future. So a little bit about the planning process. Um, as mentioned, it is two plans that are coming together and doing these together is really important because they do work in concert. You have wonderful natural assets here and, and park and recreation amenities. Each plan will inform the others. So being done together, they'll re really work in concert. The process is about four phases. We're into the second phase and we expect to wrap up the process 
probably about before this time next year. And so it is a discovery phase followed by a plan development phase where we take what we've heard through the process and marry that with the, the data and analysis that we're doing at this stage and, and hopefully shape a plan that is reflective of the community's vision for the future. And then of course, um, set that in motion with some um, recommendations and an action plan so that vision can be realized. Some of the things that you should expect through this process is, like I said, going through this analysis that we're in right now, the goals that are formulated are essentially those guideposts that tell us what are the kinds of things that when we look to the future we should try to achieve. So with that, the vision plans for both parks and recreation and your development pattern as a whole should emerge. And then coupled with recommendations, that really sets the path forward. An action plan picks out those things that can be done in the near term so that you really can move forward with a reasonable set of tasks. And those final documents will be um, several companion documents that all re relate to each other to communicate what that vision is. Great. Jim Ford. And with that, community engagement is so important. You know, finding out what the community needs uh, who makes up the community and what are their opinions on certain issues is very important. It's a multifaceted approach. Some of you may have been to the website. That's a great clearinghouse for information on what's going on with this project, as well as you may be at this community meeting or viewing it via Facebook or online. We're also going to have uh, other opportunities in the future uh, to get in touch with us and share your opinions. So the website, very important. On the website, you're going to see a few things. If you want to come to a community meeting, you need to keep in mind that because of COVID-19 restrictions, it's a pre-registration process. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't get in touch with us. There's a way for you to leave us an email. You can take the survey. You can leave open-ended comments there. There's a flyer available that you can print or just view from your mobile device that gives you a bit more information on when those events in the future are going to take place. There's also some informative maps. There's a few maps on there now. The maps will update as we do our study and learn more about uh, you know, the county as a whole. The process timeline that Meg just shared with you, there's information there as well to remind you as to where we're at in this process and what to look forward to in the future. There's also a short presentation similar to the information you're receiving today that if you want to share with your friends and family or take for yourself, uh, there's an opportunity to view that. And of course, by all means, the survey, very important. Uh, you know, as of today, I mean, the survey's only been out for uh, a few weeks and we've already got over 800 participants. So this has been a big deal. People are already telling us what they think and they range from questions about land use to recreation. Uh, it is uh, aiming at trying to get your opinions as well as your concerns. Uh, some interesting information we get, this slide, you know, uh, try to identify opportunities. You know, the areas in green show what was interesting, what people have told us is interesting so far, traffic and roads. So we're starting to understand what you feel like or what you want to share with us are those big issues we need to be focusing in on. So a little bit about the people who live in Brunswick County today and will be here in the future. Um, oh, well, a little bit about the study area first. <laughs> large geography, this is a very, very large county. And as you can see, um, 1,300 square miles roughly. And only really about 10% of that is developed. We'll talk a little bit about that um, in the, later in the presentation, but also your agriculture. That's a big piece of Brunswick County. When we think about Brunswick County, our minds usually go to the beaches and other things like that, but that's a big component of your county. Um, of the 19 municipalities in the county, five are participating in this process. So those are the ones you see highlighted in purple. So who's living here in Brunswick County and who's coming? You've had a lot of population growth. In fact, in the last 20 years, this 94% increase in population has been tremendous. So fast growing county in the state. And um, you're gonna have some more of that. So that growth is gonna continue into Brunswick County. A lot of people are discovering it, not just as visitors, but choosing to live here full time. Your population increases in the summer months with the vacations, vacationers and vacation rentals. And with what we're experiencing right now with the pandemic and people realizing they can work remotely and learn remotely, they're choosing to, to be here at different times of the year and, um, and extending their stays. So that population increase is also who you're serving in those um, longer periods. 
Um, your population is aging, so when you look at the median age compared to North Carolina and the U.S., it's, it's substantially higher, and you can see the breakdown by age group in the chart on the left. Um, much of it's concentrated in the, um, the upper age groups above 55. So where do all these folks live? Not surprisingly, most of them are around the coast um, at the beaches, and you're also seeing a lot of concentration now around Leland, Belleville, that area because of that proximity to Wilmington. So a little bit about the place. Here's a development status map. And what we do to, uh, what, the way I would characterize this is understanding where is that development that's here and is likely to stay. So everything you see in red, there's enough investment there that we don't see redevelopment happening. You have a lot of areas in gray that are relatively undeveloped. They do encompass the agricultural areas because those could change over easily. Um, and you do have open space. Everything that's in purple probably is at a stage where it could be redeveloped. So we count that as part of the land supply. So when you think about where development could go in the future, those purple parcels could be some of the areas that that, that growth could um, gravitate to. Your existing land use pattern looks like this. So not surprisingly, you do have a lot of open areas and your commercial gravitates to the corridors where it has that visibility. So it's what you would expect. But when you look at the breakdown of land use, you can see so much of it in fact, 71% falls in that category of undeveloped based on your tax data. Um, and 17% is single family residential. But that 17% in single family residential, they're producing 76% of your tax base. So that's a big chunk coming from your single family. The um, commercial, while it's a small piece of it, 2%, is producing 7%. But it sort of sheds light on the idea that you actually could have a better balance, have more non-residential in the county to support all this residential that you have and generate some more tax base off of that. The property values, of course, are higher in these areas where the population concentration is where everybody wants to be. And so we look at home values, they've gone up a lot. The chart that you're seeing just takes into account um, uh, values through 2018 and they've gone up since then. So some more recent data from the last few months, we're seeing median home values just over 300,000 and the average at 390, so we're approaching 400,000. So you've got a lot of price points across the county, but these coastal properties like the one you see pictured on the right are really bringing those numbers up. Most of the housing units are single family detached, so not a lot of variety in the county, which is a lot of what people come to, um, come to Brunswick County for. Um, it's part of that character, but also, you know, when you think about the aging population and folks choosing to be here full time, that diversity may change over time because what, what people are looking for, what their lifestyles demand, um, may start to, to shift that away from one unit, single family detached. Um, a lot of people are renting in this county, and over 50% of the folks who are renting in this county are devoting um, more than 30% of their income towards housing. That's a high number. But also, just looking at these numbers and how much is um, vacant property, what we're seeing is 38% is considered unoccupied, which means that there's a strong second home and vacation um, home market here. So tourism is a big piece of your economy. That's no surprise, and we see it in, um, in a lot of ways in terms of, I mentioned the housing, but also the spending that happens and, and the jobs that are here. So um, we have a lot of data about how people are spending money in the county and where that comes from, but you have a lot that you could capture um, in other ways. So retail, for example, because people um, aren't here full time or they're working in other places and their trips take them outside of the county, you're losing about 330 million in retail, um, real to retail sales. And so when you think about that, what could be done in the county to capture some of that and complement what you already have? So it ranges from um, the retail that you have in your, in your towns as well as the more community-oriented um, neighborhood service type of, of retail. Your jobs are concentrated in the, um, the accommodation and food services and retail trade. That also is not surprising because of your tourism industry here. We expect those numbers to be high. Um, but with your aging population, some of that is um, shifting over, and I'll show you that, that growth change. Um, the household incomes are higher, so higher than the state at 54,000. Um, so you've got a lot of disposable income here comparatively. Um, and then you've got the, uh, the commuting pattern. So folks are leaving to work. You have almost 25,000 who live here and leave the county every day to go to work. 
you have a lot of jobs here, so folks are coming in, and 17, almost 18,000 of, of the jobs here are, um, are held by folks who live here in the county. So um, still some opportunities to capture some of that job growth here. This is just a little glimpse into the major employers in the county. So you do have some fairly large employers in the county, and um, we're looking to supplement that. But here are the areas where you can expect that growth. So the health care is a big area, and a lot of that has to do with the retiree population, the aging population, so serving that community, but that's just a general need across the U.S. We're seeing that. Um, so you'll see growth there, and then in the building industry, there's a lot having to do with real estate and the and construction industry, so we're expecting some job growth there through 2026. Your educational picture is good. You have some highly educated people. Um, those numbers keep going up, and we have to applaud you for what's going on with Brunswick Community College, their efforts to, for workforce training and delivering the programs that employers are looking for and what the students are looking for. But the Brunswick Guarantee Program is really helping bolster that effort to get this community educated and then um, thought about the retention of these folks once they graduate from these programs, keeping them in Brunswick County so you have that benefit. Do you want me to talk a little bit about the agriculture? Sure. So as Meg said earlier, agriculture makes up 80% of the county. Obviously, it's a very significant part of what makes Brunswick County, Brunswick County. Uh, as you can see here, it says here we've got about 254 uh, farms, average size of 179 acres. But that's diversified. Some farming is in agriculture, or agriculture and farming of forest products, and some is in row crops and other special products. This map just kind of gives you a visual sense of what that all means. And look at these green areas and try to understand that's a huge portion of the county that is agriculture. Uh, and agriculture plays right into health. You know, lately there's been a big trend in the country and certainly in North Carolina about eating right, eating closer to home, being local. Our health is important to us as we are an aging population. So, you know, trying to not only eat right, but also figure out ways of becoming more active is all a critical component of planning into the future for Brunswick County. With recreation, what we're studying right now is what's available. Of course, the county is blessed with a number of fantastic facilities. The municipalities offer recreation. There's also private offerings. We're trying to understand everything that's available because that is not just important for health, but lots of other uh, economic development opportunities right? Trying to bring people to our county to take advantage of the beautiful opportunities we have. Uh, one of the ways we do that is we try to recognize if you live here, how close are you to a park? This particular map is trying to show you level of service areas for the existing facilities within the county system. There's large circles or, or areas 2.5 miles from the facility. Generally speaking, that's your park. That's the park that's close to where you live, you're going to go. And of course, the two mile for community parks. It's important to not only know how much you have, but how close are you to it. Accessibility is an important component to recreation. And with that, one of the tools that we like to use is as well, you know, we are an aging population. We do want to get healthy. I don't want to have to get in my car every time I use recreation. Do I live within 10 minutes? of a recreation facility. That may be a county facility, it may be some other sort. We do have some tools at our uh, disposal that we're using right now that analyze the population density, whether a route is walkable, and then comes up with information like what you're seeing here between Navassa, Leland, and Belleville. Uh, there's areas in red being, those are places where a lot of people live, they are not within 10 minutes of a park, which means they're going to probably have to drive. And then the areas that go in lighter colors, it's less uh, important. Natural resources is going to be Michael Norton. And as we look at those areas to support the, the desires and the needs of the community in, in developing our, our land use plan and, and developments, as well as the parks and recreation facilities, we have to also realize that there are areas in the county that, that really are protected in some way and will likely remain as they are. We have uh, an abundance of natural resources. We're fortunate for that. With the rivers that are in the county, obviously our biggest resource in the ocean. You can see some depictions here uh, of natural uh, preserved areas, whether it's game lands or uh, other areas on, on the preservation list due to wetlands or plant animal habitats. Uh, we also have, have to keep in mind the, the high risk flood areas that we have. 
given our, given our uh, location. We have camera setbacks on our waterways. Uh, each of these factors play a role in, in the land that is usable for the intents and, and desires, some of it which can complement uh, our, our, our desires as a community. The same thing with infrastructure. Uh, development uh, needs infrastructure in, in certain capacities and water and sewer service areas where we're fortunate to have a good backbone in our corridors of water and sewer infrastructure, uh, broadband servicing expanding throughout the county. Obviously there's, there's greater needs with that as, we, as, as we're in the current condition we are with, with COVID. So there are a lot of interest in expanding uh, a number of our, our infrastructure needs. It relates to transportation. We know obviously in, in this district, the Carolina Bays Parkway is, is of interest, the I-140 that's recently finished a couple of years ago in the northern part of the county, as well as other DOT and, and non-project, uh, uh, DOT projects, if you will, that, that, that need attention as well. So infrastructure, access, egress, all of these things are, are factors that, that must also be considered as we bring these comprehensive plans together and realize those areas of the county that, that are accessible and have the, the, the infrastructure and, and resource capacity to handle the needs. So this just gives you a little glimpse into the data that we're looking at and we're actually conducting some focus group sessions this week and next to drill down into some of the more technical details. But one of the things that we do with some of this data is look at it and we start to answer those questions, well, where can the growth go? If we've got more population coming to this area, where can the housing be? Where can the jobs be located if we're expanding our job base here? And what are the kinds of things that are going to present constraints or opportunities? And so this is just an early um, assessment of the land and taking into account all the things that Michael and Jim and I have just talked about. We'll be adding to that. But it gives you a quick look at the kinds of things that um, if it's mimicking how site selectors or people in real estate are looking at your land for, and deciding which, which areas are appropriate for these uses, just think about the housing. Everything in yellow and green, especially the green, is where that residential wants to gravitate to. So, of course, it's in the areas that you would expect. Um, when you think about commercial, it's not going to go to all those areas. It wants to be along those corridors where the visibility is. It wants to be where those population centers are. So that's why you're seeing green in those locations and not out where you see orange where it's, you know, it's flooding and the, and the um, infrastructure does not exist. Industrial is a little bit more forgiving because they don't need the visibility that commercial does. And so you're seeing a little bit more yellow there. But once again, the red is showing up along the coastline because that's where the residential and commercial wants to be. So all that plays into what are our opportunities and how do we sort this out so that when we hear from the community, what would you like to have? What would you expect to support and accommodate here in the county in the future? We can start to find those places where it not only makes sense for the community, but it also makes sense for the infrastructure capacity that you have and the environmental constraints you might be working around. So that gives you a little, little taste of that, but that brings us to the discussion portion. Again, this is not an exhaustive set of information, but enough that hopefully gets the wheels turning and thinking about what are the kinds of things that, that you all might expect in the future. So we have these questions of, you know, what's important for us to know? When you think 20 years down the road, is there something specific that must be true about Brunswick County to really be a reflection of your expectations? And do you have ideas right now that you want to share or concerns that we should know about? So we'd like to leave that open and invite you to, to share your thoughts. And then, as Jim mentioned before, we do have this website that will exist throughout the life of the project. So we hope that even beyond these meetings that you will tune back in and continue to participate with the information that's online, surveys we post, and so on. That survey that's up there now, will um, we think will close in the first week in January. We may extend it if the volume is high, but that's what we're aiming for. So please use this as a portal into, um, into the project as we go along and get information there. And of course, um, Aaron and Kirstie that were um, introduced at the beginning of the process, or beginning of the meeting, will also be on hand to um, help answer questions and, and share some um, project details with you. So with that, I wanna thank you for your attention and, and for being here and, and um, for your um, participation. And with that, I think we'll stop and take any questions um, or ideas that you might have. And one other note, we did pass out those comment cards. So if you have any thoughts that you just wanna write down and leave with us, you're welcome to do that as well. 
Yes, ma'am. We lived here uh, a, a, a long time. And there's been some in South Carolina and some in North Carolina. And we've been chased away from our home by building. We were in South Carolina once they decided to build a highway and we said, uh-oh, we'll flood next year. We sold the house before the next year and it flooded. And now we're sitting here in another spot where we're going to watch where the road is going to go. What subdivision are you going to tear up? Well, ours is going to be one of them, we're afraid. And then we, then we just recently got another thing, and, and we're right on the North Carolina, South Carolina line. Somebody's planning on building on the golf course property 500 homes. What? We don't know what are you going to do with 500 homes down there. Where are you going to put them? You know, it's become, we're actually looking around and saying, where can we go? And a panic. <laughs> So, right, so you're clearly picking some desirable places because everywhere you go, everybody else wants to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, and one of the things that a plan like this does for you is it becomes that communication tool. And so it is surprising when development comes along that you didn't expect. But what it does is it sets the tone for what should be happening in the county for the next 20 years, given the circumstances that we understand today. And your population growth is one of those circumstances. But if at the very end of the day, if, it, if it's at least a communication tool to share with um, the rest of your community and the outside world what is expected in Brunswick County, what you see as the future, what's going to be beneficial, it is that communication tool. So we hope to capture through this that vision of the county that this community um, sees for 20 years from now. Yes, ma'am the relationship between the municipalities and the county? Sure, I mean, there are 19 municipalities, and so is there a specific question about the relationship? Yeah, like um, each municipality has their own rules, and the county has their own rules, and Right, right. So, you, I mean, obviously you want it to be positive. 19 municipalities is a lot, and everybody has different ideas about the future of their own space, right? But every municipality is part of the county, so as far as this process is concerned, we're looking at the whole picture. And yes, there are pieces and parts for the participating communities that will, will take a slightly deeper dive. But when it comes to the implementation of the vision, the more everybody's singing from the same sheet of music, the better. So that's another thing, like I was saying with this communication tool, it gets everybody singing from the same hymnal. But also, there's still gonna be some disagreement there, but the best thing is looking for those commonalities, looking for where you have areas of agreement. And so it's not gonna be true everywhere, but um, those partnerships lead to better uses of resources. Do you wanna? I, I would like to add that five of the municipalities are participating in the project, not just helping the meetings, but financially as well, so then they're gonna adopt. Which are those? Um, Belleville, Baldwin Island, Haswell Beach, um, Northwest, and Nevada. I'm sorry, what was the other one beside Nevada? Northwest. Okay. So that's the far north of it. Eastern north part of the But other than that, the uh, town has a great relationship with all, all the towns. We provide services for a lot of towns. We provide planning services for the city of Northwest. Building inspections provide building services for many communities. So there's a lot of good relationships and a lot of communities from an emergency standpoint. I mean, they, they have lots of interactions. So there's a lot of communities. So we um, we might need you to repeat it at the microphone, but um, but the, the, basically the relationships vary by municipality depending on their needs. So there are a lot of um, resources that the county provides to the different municipalities. Yes, ma'am. I wondered if there is in the southern part of the county any ideas for creating and uh, starting a YMCA because it's, a YMCA certainly covers a diverse population from seniors to young children. We really don't have anything down here. You have Brunswick Community College up there with their Aqua Center, 
things like that. Down here, there's really nothing in it. And the startup fee, I think, is like $400,000. And your headquarters are in North Carolina. So it could be a great avenue to yeah, and Jim can probably speak, or Aaron can speak to this, but that's part of when we go through the parks and recreation exercise, that inventory and analysis of what you have, we're starting to take into account all these facilities that are provided through other entities. Wanna yeah, and it also had that, you know, the need for any particular recreation facility is based on a lot of things. You know, after we do this, this study, we'll A, understand what the community has identified as the needs, and then we'll look at programming, what's existing now, and the YMCA offers a lot of different services, but they also serve as a partner to recreation departments. And so we may need to figure out a way to identify what needs aren't being met and find out if there's an opportunity to do something like expand other recreation resources, such as that, in areas like South County. And this, this place has opened up for the Y So, um, and some of the things that we're finding out through the focus groups and other conversations that we're having is that demand for a wide range of, of recreational activities and, and centers like this. So, um, parks um, that where seniors can get out and walk and do things like that has become, you know, something that um, we're hearing a lot about. But just, you know, all these programmed activities. So, I'm sure it's not just the facility, but the classes and things like that that are available to folks as well, I'm guessing. Uh, but that's part of what we'll be uncovering in this process is what are those things that are that constitute the demand in this area and as Jim said what's what demands are unmet so far so capturing we were that. We for you up at the park tonight because we thought the weather was going to be okay. Yeah. It was a pretty busy park this time of day. You know, it really was. It surprised me. Right. And the, and the weather's certainly cooperating. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Most of the parks have a gazebo or pavilion type structure, but it's not enclosed. And one of the questions on the questionnaire is, would you like a clubhouse or a community center? So you can check yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. So, and the survey does get into some detailed questions about things that, um, that you would prioritize over other things or just generally that'd be nice to have. So. It, it, it's in depth. If you haven't taken it yet, it'd be great to, to have your input on that to capture some of these ideas. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you participate in the focus groups, or is that by volunteer, or how, how does that? So it's it's kind of technical. We've um, we've asked for a lot of people who deal with the data day in and day out, really like on a weekly basis or monthly basis, um, typically because it's part of their profession. So, um, uh, so this information that, that we're getting is, um, it's just one piece so that we can understand the data we're seeing a little bit more. We're doing 23 of them that are um, various topics like economic development and, and business related things as well as things related to infrastructure, education, things like that. So if you want to find out more about that, we can provide you some information about that. And, and to add that, there's a youth and recreation focus as well. Okay. Hopefully, just give you information. I'll add you to that group, and you may be able to call in. Right. Give your inputs. Right. So, if yeah, if any of you have questions about those, the topics we've just started them today, and it, they are wide ranging. So, um, we've got that scheduled. But Aaron and Kirsty can both share with you those details. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> I know all the, uh, the builders and the landowners uh, promote the sale and building on the land that they own. Does Brunswick County, do, um, do they do any promotion to develop areas that need developing, not the areas that are being developed? 
Yes. <laughs> yes, but usually related to economic development. And so um, with economic development, certainly promotion of sites and buildings that are available. So when you think about job creation and trying to get some of those job generating uses into the county, um, they're absolutely promoting those properties and buildings that um, could be the, the sites that these employers are looking for. So well, yes. That's for business, but I'm talking about residential. That's up to the developers. Generally, just the, the overall marketing and promotion of the county does serves that purpose of generally um, economic development initiatives um, being advanced. So when you're attracting folks to the community, it may be related to the, um, what you're saying, the messaging to visitors to get folks to come to the county and experience Brunswick County. Honestly, a lot of the people who come to Brunswick County of visitors ultimately become the residents. That's their first experience with Brunswick. So it's really about creating that positive experience for people as visitors when they first arrive. So in, from that standpoint, yes, the county does promote um, in that way. Any other questions? Okay, well, I'd love to take this opportunity to thank all of you again for being at the meeting. We'll be here. Um, you're welcome to look at some of the boards that are on display until the next session begins. And we'd love to answer any questions for you specifically that you see on any of these maps. And again, please use your comment cards and this website um, for the project. Um, we hope you'll visit it. But also, if you can share it with your friends, family, your circles, and, um, and ask others to, to join in that way as well and take the survey, we'd really appreciate that. Michael, Jim, do you want to add anything else? Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much.